Hi, it's Mel here from Linen Bloom Heirloom. I hope you're having a fantastic week. I'm here today to share with you a pattern and fabric review. If you're looking for the perfect fabric and pattern combination, then do watch on. So what have I been making then? Here it is. I was going to say, can you guess what it is? But you've probably seen the description of the video, and so you already know. It's the Dear and Doe Mayo Sotish Dress. I saw loads of beautiful versions of this that I really loved last year, but never got round to making it myself. But then when I got my hands on this beautiful Merchant and Mills double gauze, I thought it's an absolute match made in heaven. So um, yes, I've put it together and absolutely love it. Full disclosure, first of all, this fabric was given to me for free in return for sharing my blog post over on the Minerva.com website. So if you want to take a look at more photos and have a read of what I've put about it, I've put a link to the blog post in the video notes below. So do head over there if you're interested. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you all about it here as well. So before I start telling you about it, I'm just going to pop some photos in so you can see what this dress looks like being worn and I'll tell you a little bit about it as I'm showing those as well. So here it is first of all um, worn without a belt and you can see it's got quite a bit of ease built in so it makes it super comfortable. But if you want it more clinched in at the waist then you can quite easily just add a belt like what I have here. I think to be honest I'll probably wear it more belted than unbelted um, just because I like to have a little bit more shape when wearing a dress um, but then you've got the option if you have a nice big meal or something like that you can take the belt off and have it nice and loose and super comfortable. Isn't it just absolutely gorgeous? So um, let's start with a bit about the pattern. So um, the, the, the pattern is a bodice which has got this really nice neckline and stand collar and then you have three buttons that you attach there and you can obviously open those buttons and that helps you to get it on and off. Sleeves, you've got the sleeves there but they've got this kind of gathered ruffle at the end and for the skirt it's gathered along the waistline and then you add this nice ruffle at the bottom as well. So this pattern has got a lot of ease built into it. Um, as you can see, um, it looks quite wide here, so it does have a lot of ease, um, and that's how you can get it on and off without it having kind of a zip um, closure or anything going down past the waistline. Um, it's designed to be a loose fitting dress, um, so do bear that in mind um, about what kind of style you feel comfortable in and size up or down as necessary. Um, if I'm honest, I think next time I make this pattern I will size down one it's perhaps got a little bit more ease in than what I would normally wear um, but then with this fabric being super soft um, you can easily wear it with a belt and something else which I think I may do because I've got a little bit of um, scrap left over of this fabric I might make some ties and then just unpick a little bit on the side seam here and just make some back ties so that it can be pulled in a little bit from the back. So that's something worth bearing in mind as well if you want one that's nice and loose. If you imagine on a really hot summer's day or maybe you've had a really big meal or something like that, this will be absolutely super comfortable to wear. Um, but then sometimes you want to nip it in at the waist as well. So if you do um, attach those kind of back ties um, just in the, in, the, in the side seam so they can tie at the back, then you've got both options. Other than that, um, you can add belt loops and um, wear it with a belt as I have in those pictures. Um, or you could make a tie out of the same fabric and do kind of a tie belt, maybe with a bow at the side or something that goes all the way around. So lots of options, but it does have lots of ease built in. I'm just going to flick over to the pattern and tell you my body measurements and um, how much ease there is in this finished 
size for my size so you've got an idea how that translates onto the body. Okay, so taking a look at the body measurements and finished garment measurements. So I fitted pretty much exactly into the size 38. So you can see the difference there. Um, for example, at the waist, it's 26 and three quarter body measurements, but the finished weight, waist is 32 and three eighths. And just to kind of take a look at the size range on this pattern. So you can see there, that's the size that it goes up to. So all in all, the pattern was pretty straightforward. The instructions aren't very detailed at all, but they don't really need to be in most of the areas um, because it's, it's basically sewing darts on the bodice um, and then the skirt um, and the sleeves is just kind of gathering rectangles. The bit of the instructions which are tricky and I wouldn't recommend following the instructions on the pattern are how to attach this lovely collar. Now what I did is I found an amazing tutorial by Professor, Pin Professor Pincushion which I followed rather than following the instructions and that was really really useful and what I'll do is I'll leave a link to that video in the notes below so if you do fancy making this dress then I would definitely check out their tutorial. Let me just show you the type of collar up close. So you can see it's like a little stand collar and what I've done is hand stitched it on the inside so that it's nice and neat and then it goes down into the button holes and, and button closures there. But that really was the only um, part of the, of the pattern which was a little bit tricky. So fit wise, as I said, there's lots of ease built into this pattern, so watch out for that. Also with the length, the length for me is just right. It's just how I would like to wear a shorter dress and I'm five foot three. So again, bear that in mind. I very often find that patterns are too long for me and I have to take them up, but I didn't with this. I just sewed the standard hem length and the length is just right. So if you're taller, then do bear that in mind. You might want to add a little bit of length and then take it up to make sure that you don't end up with a dress that's too short. The fabric, um, I wish you could feel how gorgeous this is. It's so soft. I mean, you would expect Merchant and Mills fabric to be um, super quality anyway. Um, I'll add in a bit of text because I can't just remember how much this is priced at. I'm thinking $16.99 a metre, um, but I'll put some text in if it's any different. Again, I'll leave a link to the fabric in the, um, in the notes. This colour is absolutely beautiful. It's called Penny Lane and it's a orange colour. So I thought this would be brilliant because I can wear this at any time of year, in any season. Um, this can work really well. For example, I've got this hat. Um, so I thought it worked really well with that hat. Um, I've got this lovely bag, which matches very well with it as well. You can wear it with sandals in the spring and summer. Um, you can wear it with knee-high boots in the autumn, winter. Um, you could wear it with Converse. It's just such an easy style um, to, to wear for, for any occasion, really. You could really dress it up or dress it down. Um, I pre-washed the fabric just on kind of a standard 40 cycle um, and it washed really well. It was really nice to work with. It sewed really easily. It doesn't stretch out a shape or anything like that. The only thing to be careful of with double gauze is when you're um, cutting it out because it, it tends to warp sometimes on the fold. So you think you're cutting a straight line, then you move it out and it's got a big warp in the middle just because it's got so much movement in it. So to help with that, you can put some pattern paper underneath the fabric when you're cutting it out to give it a little bit more stability or maybe don't cut it out on the fold, cut it out on a single layer so you can ensure that you're keeping on grain when you're cutting out. The only thing that was tricky from a sewing point of view is when it came to try and um, top stitch. So you kind of, you add the ruffle on the sleeve and then you top stitch it in place. 
and because this fabric in nature is um, I don't know how to describe it but you've kind of got lumps and bumps just through the true nature of the fabric I found it very difficult to keep that top stitching nice and straight so if I was making it again I wouldn't have bothered with the top stitching I'd have just pressed it up and I did then um, later omit the top stitching you're supposed to top stitch the ruffle on the skirt and I omitted that after I found out it was a little bit tricky when I did the sleeves um, but yeah other than that it was really nice to sew this type of fabric works brilliantly with this type of pattern that's gathered because it gathers really really well um, you get nice narrow gathers without it adding too much bulk onto the pattern. I'm just going to turn this inside out so I can show you the seams which are overlocked. I think it just helps to see how a garment's constructed if you can see where all the um, seam lines are. So I didn't have any matching colour overlocker thread um, so I just used this kind of cream colour that I'd got. Um, ideally, I would rather have matching colour, but we're in a lockdown and it wasn't essential to um, order overlock a thread when I've got some in. Um, but you can see here are the seams. So you've got the neckline and the collar. You've got the sleeves and the ruffles. You've then got the waist the side seams and the seam along the bottom ruffle yeah it's really nice to sew as I say you've just got the darts um, and then the the rectangle gathering really that that was all that was to it apart from that collar so that's it that's all I wanted to share today is um, a little bit about my latest dress I absolutely love it I'm definitely going to be making another one in fact I've got some fabric um, that I'm going to make it in so but I forgot to bring it in so let me just go and dash and get it and then I can show you okay so here it is this is another fabric that I've got for my Minerva makes um, it's recently been washed and I've not pressed it yet so it'll be a bit crinkly but this is a beautiful Merchant and Mills linen from their EU laundered range and again I thought this would be um, really great in this in that dress because the gathers will work really well it'll be nice and light to wear especially in the spring and summer and I like that it's a nice neutral colour as well I think that'll work really really well um, so let me just show you this up close so you can see it's got a tiny little check that runs through it but it isn't anything that would be big enough to have to worry about pattern matching or anything like that but it's just enough to give it a bit of interest and a bit of depth to the colour so yeah I really like this and I think that'll work really well and I know that's a dress that I'm going to wear absolutely loads so I can't wait to make another one. I'm going to size down I think on the next one just so that I haven't got quite so much ease and then as I say I think I'll add the ties at the back. If I don't add the ties at the back I will add belt loops so that I can wear it with the belt. Any questions at all about the pattern then do um, ask them in the comments below and if you've made a version of this dress that you would like to share with people then again feel free to um, leave a link to any blog posts or anything like that that you've shared. Other than that have a wonderful week, have a lovely time sewing whatever it is that you're sewing and I will see you very soon. Bye!